What's up guys? Pedro here. And on this video, we're gonna be brewing another Brewer's Best kit. This one's called Pacific Coast. It's an IPA and I'm sure you're gonna love it. Coming up right after this. Okay, so here you have it, the Brewer's Best kit. Comes with all the ingredients that you need to uh, brew this beer. Uh, from the malt, priming sugar, uh, grains. This kit even comes with bottle caps for crying out loud. But I purchased these bottle caps right here on Amazon.com. And uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Comes with all kinds of literature, some wine stuff, so uh, we may have to look at that in a little bit because we're going to make some more wine um, earlier or later this year, rather. Uh, we're missing the most important ingredient. Most important ingredients in a IPA is the hops. That's it. And you know what they say, if you're going to make some beer, you need to drink some beer. Cheers. Okay guys, let's go brew some beer. Okay, of course I've already cleaned and sanitized all the equipment, uh, including the uh, wart chiller. Uh, and that brings us to our first talking point, the sanitizing part. Um, don't fret if if you don't have any uh star sand or uh any other kind of sanitizer don't fret over it uh when i first started doing these uh home brews i washed my stuff with soap and water and i used bleach to um to sanitize everything so don't fret if you don't have a sanitizer per se just make sure everything's clean okay so uh, if you watched my first video, you'll understand why we're outside right now using a uh, Bayou, Bar or what is it called? Bayou Classic. Purchased this off of Amazon, by the way. Um, it runs off of propane. And we're outside because the last time I did uh, homebrew, I, the wart boiled over onto the stove and made a huge mess. And the wife was not too happy about it. So anyways, I promised I wouldn't do it again. So I bought this. Now, uh, the weather permits me to be able to do this today. It's kind of cool, uh, but it's not too bad. And it's not raining, thank God, because it's been raining so much here. You can see um, I had to repair my railing uh, on my deck because a tree, a tree back there. I don't know if you can see it in the video or not. Let's see if I can get out of the way. Well, that tree back there fell and hit my deck and uh, damaged the railing, so I had to repair it. Anyways, don't judge, I haven't stained it yet, because I'm gonna stain the whole deck when I do. No, I'll put a link in the description below for this burner here, it's pretty cool. Um, I also purchased yesterday, I purchased on Amazon an induction burner, so I can start doing it in the house. I don't know if you recognize or not, in the last video I did, uh, the wine tasting video, uh, I've started building a uh, studio slash bar slash kitchen in my garage so um, that's going to be coming soon I've already started using it uh, but I'm going to use that induction burner in there so that I can do do everything in my garage I don't have to worry about inclement weather uh, we're going to start off we take two and a half gallons of water we're going to bring it to a steeping temperature which is 150 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit uh, I've got a thermometer in there, and I've got my water in there. I've warmed it up already, getting ready to relight this thing and uh, bring it up to uh, my steeping temperature. I've relit the fire, got the heat going again. We're at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, something else I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> when I said about the boiling over in, in the kitchen and getting my wife all upset, um, that's something else that a lot of people do, it, especially after you put your malt in, you've got to keep a close eye on your wart. 
after you put your mold in because it, it creates like a layer on top and it all of a sudden will start boiling. But anyways, don't fret. I think everybody's probably done. Uh, but I've done it twice and I continued with the process. I went ahead and added just a little bit of water to try to compensate for what boiled out of it. And I continued with the process and finished my beer and it tasted fine. So if you happen to boil your wort over, don't fret. Like I said, everybody's probably done it. And uh, uh, just continue with the process, unless of course you boiled it all out and started a fire or something. And, and I have started a fire out here before, but that's another story. Okay, so we're at 160 degrees right now. I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, grains in the uh, grain bag. And I'll take our grains. You got get your grains in there. You're supposed to tie a loose knot, just a real loose knot in there. And I'm going to tie one that I can actually untie later easily. And just set it in there, let it continue to do its thing. Okay, so I had to turn the heat down just a little bit. Uh, it was getting about 165. Don't want it to get any higher than that. Okay, so we put the grain in the grain bag, <clears throat> which is cheesecloth, and uh, we're letting it steep. You got to let it steep for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to add some more ingredients. Man, that smells good. <laughs> okay, while well, y'all weren't looking, I was reading in the instructions here because I had a bag of dry malt and could not figure out what, there was nowhere in these instructions where it says to add it. But I looked at the top here and in the specialty grains section, it has that crushed uh, caropels uh, malt. I don't know how you say it, caropels, I guess. But anyways, it's listed as a specialty grain. So like I said, when y'all weren't looking, I added it to the grain bag and I'm steeping it with the grains. Hopefully that's right. It doesn't list it anywhere in here. It just says grain bag, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, and then I read up here and in the specialty grain, it's listed in the specialty grain, so I added it to it. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and you wanna take your grain bag out. Now, you're not supposed to squeeze this. And I know I keep saying this, but this smells so good, man. You let this, uh, let, let it drain into the wart. It's wart now at this point. Let your grains drain into uh, the wart. And when it's, when it's done, you take them out, of course. But when it's done, you turn up the heat a little bit and get it to a rolling boil. And then you add your malt, your liquid malt and your corn sugar. Next time I'm gonna rig something up that'll hold this thing while it drains. Because I don't like holding it. Is it ever gonna stop? I'm tempted to rig something now. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, I read something a while ago in the instructions, which I didn't know, but apparently hops are very dangerous to dogs and potentially uh, deadly to dogs. It says even a small amount, which I had no idea. I thought it was completely harmless. Uh, but we have, as you know, we have dogs and uh, we have Baxter who just turned a year old and is curious about everything. So I'm going to be extremely careful with the hops and the hops residue. Okay, that is done. This here, I'll probably, I'll probably throw that in the garden or one of my pot plants. See what our temperature is. 
it's just above 160 so it's perfect it's, it's still at the steeping temperature i'm going to turn up i'm going to turn up the heat bring it to a rolling boil and i'm going to add the liquid malt which i failed to tell you earlier um, you want to run hot water on the cans of liquid malt just to make it easier to get to get the malt out of the can and put it into the wort uh, so anyways, I'm going to bring this to a rolling boil, and we're going to add the malt in just a second. Okay, so we've got our wort to a rolling boil. We're going to add the liquid malt, which I had in the sink, and warm water to loosen it up, like I said earlier, uh, make it easier to transfer it from the can into the wort. Um, also, we're going to add the uh, corn sugar to it. I'm going to add the corn sugar first. And you want to stir it as you do it. Might need to turn it down a little bit. I don't want to repeat. See, this stuff's like molasses. And that is why you want to put it in the warm water prior to putting it in here. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a warm dishcloth handy so you can get the sticky stuff off of you while you're doing this. It actually came out pretty good. you add all the malt and that corn sugar as well. The package on the corn sugar says to save some back for uh, when you go to bottle, but the instructions say to add it all in there. So add it all in there because it does come with a packet of priming sugar to put in before you bottle your beer so it'll be carbonated. God, that smells so good. My wife would beg to differ. I think I said that last time. got to continuous, continuously stir this, uh, stir the malt until it returns to a rolling boil. <laughs> okay, once we got it back to a rolling boil, after adding the uh, malt and the sugar, uh, you're going to add the first set of hops, which is the Columbus pellets. Um, so we're going to add those right now. Okay, so after you add that, the first set of hops, the Columbus hops, you let it boil for 40 minutes. And then you add the next set of hops, which is the um, Citra, the Citra hops. Uh, so we'll let this boil for 40 minutes, then we'll add the Citra hops and go from there. Okay, so now it's time to add the uh, Citra hops. And we'll let that uh, boil for about five minutes, and then we'll add the next one. Smells good. Let's 
set a timer for five minutes. A timer is already running. Would you like to replace it? Yes. Okay, the timer's now running in five minutes. Okay, so you can see I did go in earlier and get, get a jacket. It's freaking cold out here, man. Uh, and that's why I bought the induction burner so I can start doing everything indoors because I don't like the cold. I hate, I hate the cold. I like Georgia. You get a good mix. Although I still hate the cold. I have to say this classic Bayou burner is pretty dang cool. You can keep the temperature right about where you want it. It's just, it's been a beautiful rolling boil this whole time. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the Centennial hops. Uh, we'll put that in and wait another five minutes. Love the smell of that. Dude, this smells so good. Just, uh, five gallons. A typical batch is five gallons. Do what? Serving for one. Yeah, serving for one. Okay, so it's time to put the last, uh, not necessarily the last, but the last for now, uh, hops in. Chinook. Ch I guess that's how you pronounce it. It's almost like the Chinook helicopter. Um, C-H-I-N-O-O-K. Um, so anyways, this is the last batch here. Boil it for another five minutes, and then we're going to have to cool it down to put it in the fermenter. Okay, so I have to make a correction. On the last boil, you're supposed to boil it for 10 minutes, not five. So the other ones were five minutes. The, the last one is 10 minutes. I cannot wait for that induction burner to get here. Time to shut her off. Okay, now I've shut it down. I'm gonna cool it off. Um, I am fortunate enough to have a wart chiller, which is just, well, I'll show you. And I have sanitized this. This is a coil of copper. And you hook a garden hose to this end right here. It sends cold water through the coils. It comes down to the bottom, goes all the way up, and then comes back out this end here and dispenses the water out of there. It sucks the heat out of the wart through the coils and sends it back out through here. So the water going in here is cold. The water coming out of here, you better not put your hand in front of it because I have. It hurts. It's hot. Scalding hot. I'm fortunate enough to have one of these. These are not exactly inexpensive. They're, I don't even know what they go for today. I think I paid 50 bucks for this years ago. So it's, it's probably more than that now. But uh, if you don't have this, you can take this, take your wart, put some ice in the sink and put some water in there and then put it in there. Try, just You have to get it down to about 70 degrees um, before you pour it into your fermenter and pitch your yeast. This thing is awesome. I've already sanitized it but uh, and put it in here. Cool the wort down to about 70 degrees and then pitch the yeast. We'll do that in just a few minutes. You can see when that water, when that water first come out, it was steaming. Oh, that's already not hot. Uh, I'm gonna put the thermometer in it. Okay, so 
I'm not really sure how long it's been uh, since I put the wort chiller in there, but it seems like it was like five minutes ago and it's already chilled to the 70 degrees that we need. We're gonna transfer the wort into a fermenter, add the yeast, put an airlock on it, and And as you're uh, pouring your wort into your fermentation bucket, uh, be careful not to get any of the sludge that's in the bottom uh, into your fermentation bucket. Yeah. You are. Okay. So you need to add water to it, to the wort, and bring it back to approximately five gallons. And then we'll pitch the yeast. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pitch the yeast in between to help mix it up. Do not rehydrate the yeast. You just sprinkle it on top and mix it in. So I'm, can you get a kind of get a view inside here? Down in there? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got a view of that. We're going to mix it in a little bit. And we're going to add some more water till we get it up to about five gallons. Okay, so you stir the yeast in, fill the water back up to about five gallons, approximately five gallons. Stir the yeast in and we'll put the lid on it and put the airlock on it in a few minutes and Within 24 hours, she should start bubbling. Okay, so we got it to right at five gallons. We're gonna put the lid back on. And nab it. We're gonna put the lid on. Put it in a little hole. Put this in a dark place. Um, temperature is about 64 to uh, 70 degrees. Okay, so we're giving away these bottle openers to the first 10 subscribers that request one. So if you like the video, please hit the like button and share it if you're so inclined. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Until next time, God bless. Y'all take care.